unfiltered, uncensored, and unapologetic. This is the Retail War Zone Podcast. Tonight, we have got Proto Rage with us. We've got the Shadow King, a.k.a. Gilgamesh. Uh, we were going to have retail PTSD. She's trying. Um, if she's not able to get in, she may pop up in the chat. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, these folks' issues and the businesses they've been in, uh, you know, the kind of effect it has had on their mental health, um, and kind of go from there. Uh, it's kind of a free form conversation about the different experiences they've been through. What's up, Mariah Karen? Good to see you. Boy, that that is <laughs> that is coming coming hard and fast, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot wait for you guys to hear what we've got brewing. So just hold on a little bit longer. Um, we're hoping to probably Monday at the soonest, definitely by the end of next week. Um, just be prepared. Uh, blame tag has made it very well known that you're not ready. <laughs> There's nobody ready for what's coming. So, um, but yeah. So having said that, uh, we'll start with Gilgamesh. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you and then we'll do the same with Proto. Um, God. Well, I'll, well, yeah, on, on Twitter, I'm known as the Shadow King. Um, my handle is Gilgamesh086. Um, I've been working customer service uh, for quite some time now. Probably, I would say, since I was 15. Basically, since I was able to work. So, um, I've done jobs ranging from um, stock, like overnight stock at grocery stores. I've done restaurants, fast food. Um, working at call centers, and now I'm working for a telecommunications, uh, a phone carrier for for short. And um, it's it's been interesting. I'll say that much. I bet. All right, Proto, your turn. <clears throat> um, those you remember, I'm Proto Rage. I've was we'll here last time. Um, pretty much remember, I've bounced around different fields: customer service, retail back of house, uh, health mechanics, hotel night desk, lo- loads of fun stories from that, uh, call center work, re- credit retention, and now formerly um, system manager of a once soon be defunct, bankrupt uh, corporate vape company store. And now former mattress salesman. So do you want to go into real quick what happened with the mattress thing? Um, which part like what was the part that was like shady you know, or the, how what, I put well, well what happened to you <laughs> alright well I had worked a week I didn't really have a day off and they gave me maybe four or five days of training which was literally sit down in front of a computer watch these modules read these notes I still have a binder full of notes that I have um but pretty much I was hired, brought on. Hey, I told him, so look, um, since it's going to be between paychecks, I want to stay in this area, not bounce between different stores. They said, sure, they lied. So they had me bouncing at most. Uh, uh, screw it. I'm in North Carolina. They had me bouncing between Greensboro, Kernersville, High Point, Winston Salem. Jesus Christ. All right. And Burlington. <laughs> Holy hell. And my mind you, I'm still fresh off the boat, and they left me on some days completely by myself, uh, no backup to run the store, open the clothes. And they're like, okay, make sure, get the sales, get people on uh the mattress thingy, get people on this and that. Get credit applications. I am by myself. I don't know much of anything. What? 
Well, I know. Didn't you have a situation like recently where you, you your training was shit? You were left alone in a store mm-hmm. with nobody, and like the systems went down. Yeah, um, they had the internet company come in. They swapped all the routers because they're being upgraded. Yay! Uh, because everything was virtual machine based. If you know anything about virtual machines, essentially it's a little desktop um, Raspberry Pi computer, essentially that connects to an off network in their intranet. So it's IP locked. So if you change anything, you have to change all the different setups and everything. Were they, were they using um, the little HP thin clients? Yeah. yeah. Yep. The little, uh, Weiss yep. machines. And I'm not their paid tech support. I'm not their it people. I was told their IT is supposed to come in and do it. No one did it. So I had to turn away essentially four or five sales because I can't do anything. And your D and did your DM ever show up? (laughs) No, Jesus DM just knew the store was open. I first thing I called the DM was, Hey, this is what's going on. What do I do? Oh, call the store support line. That's it. Wow. I call a store support line. They put it in the IT ticket, and I sat there the rest of the day watching Ink Master. That is crazy. So, and how I got fired. I know you want to yeah. hear that. Um, they essentially, I, as far as I knew, I had Sunday off. I had been working five or six days. I thought I had Sunday off. And come to find out, I apparently was supposed to open to close the shop. I didn't know this. I don't have access to the email schedules through my means, even though they say I'm supposed to have access, but I'm not assigned to one store. They have me, again, bouncing around. Each store has different logins. Um, how am I supposed to get the schedule? They use ADP, but they don't post the schedule to ADP. Mm -hmm. Again, how can I check my schedule? At first, I was like, all right, I'll see what I can do. I can get, I'll see how I can get in. And then I just, pretty much, best part is my partner, my fiance, who's actually in chat. Thank you. She actually looked at me and said, we already have plans today. If you want to, you can tell them off. What are they going to do? Write you up? They are desperate for bodies. So I told off my DM. My DM gave me the whole thing of, well, it's supposed to be your responsibility, this and that. And um, we ended up playing phone tag. She moved me to voicemail on purpose. There wasn't a ring over. And then eventually we talk, I get a a message back going, hey, don't bother coming back for the rest of the week. I don't need you. Wow. But on the phone, when I went into her, she just went, okay. That is, that is crazy. Um, Wow. And you'd only been up there how long? About two, three weeks. Guys, you hear that shit? Two to three weeks. (laughs) Two to three weeks, and I and I've at three locations I have seen health code violations. Yeah, I remember seeing the picture of their trash thing. Oh yeah, so uh, guess what website I paid a visit to after I got all after I got let go. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Well done. (laughs) Well done. All right, so there, there's, there's what's been going on with Proto Rage in the past twenty four, forty eight hours. It's been, it's been an <laughs> interesting story. So now let's get to this mental health thing. So, um, Gilgamesh. So, it, in your journey, you know, what have been some situations that have you know really adversely you know affected you know your mental health due to the job? Um. It's gotten to a point where, like, especially this this month, we my my current job, 
I've heard, I've been working there for almost three years now and I've heard everything. I, yeah, I, 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 I've reached a point where I'm pretty much not surprised at the stuff that people pull, the things that people say and the actions that people do. Um, especially around certain times of the year when certain phones get released and not to mention, you know, we're also dealing with a massive shortage on everything. Yeah. So. I, there have been many times where I've just been fussed out or cussed out or, or some of you know, we're, I'm, I'm in the South, so people throw shade and stuff and they'll say snipe remarks to your face and smile at you at the same time. Um, you pretty much get, a, you, you get cussed out for stuff that you have no control over whatsoever. People threaten your job on pretty much a daily basis. Um, I've had people look at me straight in my face and just tell me, I'm going to get you fired. Now I just kind of look at them and laugh and I'm like, because that might like, tell me something I haven't heard. And there's not really much protection from management because, you know, management is also hanging your job over your head saying, well, you know, if you don't get this and this and this done, we're going to have to have a disciplinary conversation. And I'm like, okay, like I, I hear more, I hear more stuff about what I'm not doing or how I'm not doing something right or how I need to improve. There have been times I've pretty much hit all my goals for the entire month, and I'm still told, you can do more. That's just, it's really so typical, and, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. You know, the three of us, we're all here in the South, so, and you're right about how people treat you here. I mean, there is a whole lot of, you know... The Southern quote unquote charm that really is, like you said, it's just throwing shade. Um, and it's just like people in all industries now, man, it's not just, it's not just retail. I mean, you know, like with what you do or, or telecommunication or, you know, any kind of customer facing business, they feel like it's appropriate to just say whatever the hell they want to somebody without any regards to that person's feelings, knowing what their day has been like or or anything. And, you know, uh, Katie was asking, did you work for corporate or for a retailer? I work corporate, so it's even worse. (laughs) Uh, Wow. So so are you in, uh, like, phone support? Um, Mainly sales. I um, I work at a store. I don't want to give the I don't want to give away the job because I don't I got want you. It on me because I, on my Twitter page I, oftentimes I'm going off about my job. <laughs> right. But um yeah, it's I work in phone sales. So I pretty much sell the cell phones, I sell the service along with the phones. I have to explain every aspect of the business. And I I'm oftentimes I'm solving problems or uh, yeah, yeah. Most of the time, I'm solving problems, and ironically, it's stuff that comes from the company itself. Right. Now, do you work for a carrier, or do you work for a you know a specific, uh, let's just say, brand? I work for a carrier. Okay. It's so, carrier. so that encompasses all makes and models of of phones. Uh, I'm assuming that iPhone release time is not fun at all. It's no every year. <laughs> <laughs> and and you bring up a valid point about, you know, the shortages, because I mean, obviously, you know, there's a silicon shortage right now and it's affecting everything from consumer electronics to cars. And I can only imagine, do you, uh, when the Apple launch happened, was there any kind of communication that they expected a smaller number of available units versus previous launches? None whatsoever. But to be honest with you, I expected them to do this because Apple does this every year. Um, the store opens only for iPhone pre-orders. A small amount of people come in for pre-orders. Apple releases the phones. Um, whoever hasn't picked up their pre-order, it becomes first come, first serve. And all the major phones get sold out within a week. And when we get stopped for punishment, we'll only get like two or three phones in a box. And nine times out of 10, they are nothing of what we need to sell. Oh, wow. 
Now, how much abuse have you taken from somebody who pre-ordered that for whatever reason they weren't able to pick it up or it got canceled or whatnot, and then they turn around and be like, oh, I didn't cancel it. Where's my phone? That's happened, but um, we've also had situations happen where because the system is dumb and people will make their pre-orders when they have, like when they're, they switch over, um, because customer care doesn't bother to reach out to the customer or even understand if they're a new customer, they will suspend the SIM card that they just use to switch over to the company. And then they have to call customer care to let them know, hey, um, I'm new and I just ordered a phone because I'm pre-ordering. You guys shut me off. Can you please turn me back on? And it causes a lot of miscommunication because when it hits, it, we, we have to figure out that it hit. And it doesn't happen on the day of activation. So it'll be something where, like I've had this happen a lot of times. I'll activate a customer, especially during the um, iPhone 13 pre-order. Um, I would activate a customer, get them, encourage them to switch over, get them to pre-order the phone. And when they come back, uh, they're like, my phone isn't working. I thought you said it was a lot. And I'm like, yeah, it is a lot. I, I checked it right in front of you. Like I, I swapped the SIM cards and the icon showed up and everything. Everything was good. But what's going on? Well, I can't get any service on my phone. Oh, customer care struck again. <laughs> like, not, like I said before, uh, they end up being your enemy. Customer care has even abused the retail people. Oh, so, wow. uh, yeah. So uh, they'll call the store and they'll be like, I don't understand why you can't do this. I told them they could do it. And I'm like, well, you, you guys, you're looking at the same systems that we're looking at, right? Yeah. Well, you're the one who has more control than we do. And they'll sit there and try and argue with me while I'm going like, look, man, the customer is what's more important, right? We need to help out the customer. Why, why are you trying to have a, excuse my language, a pissing contest? I'm not trying to fight. They kind of had, do they come off of this kind of like up on high attitude? You know, we're better than you. Oh yeah, definitely. Jesus, man, that is, that's it's terrible. Top- it's like we have no idea what we're talking about, that we don't understand anything, and we're just flat out stupid. <laughs> and the reason why we don't do stuff for them is because we don't want to. A lot, uh, a lot of people's um, idea of the phone salesman is someone who's lazy but wants you to buy everything, and not, that's not the case. Yeah, it's you know, phone sales are rough enough as it is. Um, Katie in the chat because she's familiar with what you're dealing with says customer care makes enemies of all of us in store reps all the time because they know we are accountable in person and they aren't over the phone. She is so correct. They can turn them away. We can't. Yep. They can just hang up and be done. Right. We have to sit there and let the person cuss us out. And, you know, while we're, while we're steadily stepping away from them, because it's like, you know, just in case you do anything, I need to be able to dodge. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, also in the chat is Amy. Um, you know, she, she's retail PSD. We're having some issues with the, with the Skype. So as we go through Amy, if there's something you want to throw up that you, you want to talk about, you know, I'm looking out for it. So, um, oh, wow. There you are. Okay. Well, we've heard from Proto Rage and we've heard from Gilgamesh about what they, what they've done a little bit. So since you're here, um, Tell us a little bit about yourself and and what you've done. Oh, so no, fun fact about me: nothing in my life makes sense. I've been in, I was in retail for going about ten years, um, anywhere from grocery stores, video game stores, furniture stores to rent to own. Before I said enough was enough, I I can't take this anymore, and now I'm in a uh, warehouse and logistics for secondary inventory. So you think your TJ Maxx, your Burlington uh, coats, I'm just out of customer facing with same money, better quality of life. Uh, Kroger, I've been at Kroger, GameStop, track supply both in-store and corporate uh, and rent a center. And then a couple of little mom and pop shops along the way. And so I've, down in Ohio, Arizona, Tennessee, and now Texas. I would have to imagine that Rent a Center was terrible. First store, great. The second store, I, if it burned to the ground, I would actually be there, you know, taking shots of tequila and being like, bigger. I need a bigger flame. It needs to be bigger. 
I, I just the the rent to own thing is just appalling to me. You know, especially like you know, you'll see that. Oh, look, you can purchase an Xbox Series S through your local rental place, but by the time you pay it off, that two hundred and ninety nine dollar box is like twenty four hundred dollars. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And it got worse. I went from GameStop to Rent-A-Center. So getting from there and seeing that we're selling a Nintendo Switch with no games and it's been previously rent, quote unquote, rented and seeing that they're selling it for 800 bucks. Meanwhile, the GameStop that I used to manage across the street was like, you know, Layaway is only two ninety nine ninety nine. So after tax in Arizona, it's like three twenty seven and some change. But nah, not like that. And I was pretty good at sales, but it just sucked the absolute life out of me that a uh, 72 hour hole turned into a five day stay with really good drugs. Wow. That is something else. Okay. So, uh, proto rage. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, you could pick, uh, you know, whichever job you had or whatnot, but uh, give us something that, you know, really, really put you kind of in, you know, a bad place you know, from pressures from the job? I, oh, I'm, I'm going back a good couple of years and my fiance can attest to this. Back when I was doing the on the phone, customer support, sales, all that for lovely, lovely hammock source. There was years and years of backlog miscommunication between customers and policies and third party vendor drop ships and missing parts. It was it was bad. I couldn't sleep well. I was actually doing customer service calls in my sleep. And like I'm actually doing like phone conversations. Uh-huh. Yep. We'll get that part out for you. I'm sorry. I apologize. While I am asleep and my partner, she's just looking at me like I'm in bed crazy from the amount of stress that that had put me under. Yeah. Um, have a really good question here that, that ties into this time of year. How many of you absolutely dread the holidays? Do any of you not want to celebrate them due to retail burnout? <laughs> I finally got out of retail and I still don't know if I'm going to enjoy it this year. I haven't just I haven't figured out if I'm going to be cheery or if I'm just going to sit there and be like, I know how this all works. And it's not good. Nope. Gilgamesh. <laughs> um, so I think I've worked out a bit of a formula. Um, I actually learned this from one of my, well, me and my coworker had, had this idea. So if you plan your PTO after the blackout period, that gives you something to be happy towards. So, you know, you can just go through the whole holiday season with a smile on your face going like, when all this is over, I'm going on a break and I'm not coming back until next year or after this is all done. I'm just taking my 10 days and when I come back, I'll be a much better renewed person. For me, that worked because beforehand, I, I just kind of went on autopilot for the holiday season. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be excited for the holidays. It's just with everything going on. I already know what I'm going to be going into. It's going to be a pain, and I know my partner is going to be going through a lot as well. The most I can do is just try and power through. I already know this year's going to be terrible as far as it, as far as anything goes, sales and support. As far as like trying to have some sort of happiness from the holiday, I'm going to try. But still, to this day, nothing can top my personal experience of having worked at the hotel front desk. I think it was Christmas Eve. A little old couple comes in, well, two little old ladies, and they say, they say the what you expect. Oh, dear boy, it's such a shame that you're having to work here on the holidays. And me being dark humor and everything else, she's already done where I'm going with this. Without missing a beat, processing their papers and everything, just went, yeah, but someone has to be here to check you in. It's not like I have a family to go home to. Wow. You know, my personal story, and, and, and I, I, I will 
I've said this numerous times, uh, working for Jesus's craft store killed Christmas for me. Um, you know, you were surrounded by Christmas merchandise from August until really February. So you only had, you know, March, April, May, June, July. So you really only had four and a half months of freedom of not dealing with it. And to the point that I could go the rest of my life <clears throat> without seeing another Christmas tree. Um, it, it's a horrible way to be because prior to that, I did enjoy the holidays. Um, after that, you know, continuing in retail management, it, Christmas just became a day off. You know, it, there, there was no meaning to it other than finally I got a break. And to the point about taking PTO, you know, the one thing about most retailers, and especially if you're full-time, like a department head or a manager, you don't get a break until after January because typically you come out of the holidays and as soon as you come out of the holidays, you've got to start prepping for a total store inventory. So there is no break whatsoever. Now, I don't know, um, Amy, uh, was, uh, when did GameStop do their inventories? Uh, so it kind of depended on your region. So I was out in the Tucson region and sometimes I, my store for some reason or another, cause we were a satellite store, just a middle of nowhere. Uh, we flipped back and forth from Phoenix. So we typically did ours between February and April, but I absolutely didn't hate that as much because our fiscal year was January. We had about 14 stores in our district. But everybody took a vacation right before or right after vacation. So 14 managers was just, a, it was just every block body blocked their time and said, I'm going on vacation here. We're not doing inventory this week. Like I had a very good district manager that actually respected the PTO said, Hey, you guys went through hell. You deserve it. So I got very lucky. But at the same time, you're getting off vacation. You're just like, right. Inventory wow. and GameStop inventory. Yes, it's a smaller store, but you would not believe the tiny itty bitty pieces and the little itty bitty discs and the cartridges. I yeah. mm-hmm. I would rather watch paint dry than do that ever again. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, some interesting things in, in the chat here. Uh, Iron Maiden says, my mall Santa friend, who I really want on the show, by the way, um, had someone ask him to do a Christmas in July party, and he absolutely refused. Christmas is in December. Please stop. Even Santa is over it. That's beautiful. Um, Mariah Karen says, I've already heard of office workers insisting they should get Friday the 24th off just because Christmas falls on a Saturday this year. Yeah, Those office workers very obviously work not on the customer service floor with the headsets on. They're no. like second, third floor, fifth floor. Yeah. They, and yeah, yeah. it's, um, you know, it's. It's, I, you know, and speaking of, of, of mental health, I mean, guys, we, we need to keep the workforce and our thoughts going in for the rest of the year because, look, I'm telling you, it is a perfect storm of abuse that's coming here very shortly. You've got the, the supply chain issues. You've got the labor movement issues. You've got, you know, the anti-work stuff going on. And then on top of it, you got Black Friday. All right. And... I I really feel like, you know, this was something I said, you know, the other night when Berserk was on was that I'm terrified of Black Friday this year. And, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are already stressed out because, you know, there's going to be people like if you work in the grocery business and you just happen to be one of those locations where guess what? You're out of turkeys already or you, you, you're out of Thanksgiving staples. It's going to be a consistent bitch fest from the customer base because okay you've ruined thanksgiving now they're going to take their thanksgiving getting ruined out on the retailer shopping for christmas i mean it's just going to be bad oh god yeah yeah i mean it's i mean and you know you're going to have a lot of people because face it there's a lot of people that are working in retail you know, that might be quote unquote seasonal employees and they're working, that's their third job or whatnot. And, and they're struggling to put food on the table and whatnot. And they've got kids and they're trying to take care of the kids for Christmas. They're already beat up. And now you, they're just going to have to sit there and take this shit. 
and it's going to be worse this year than I think it ever has been. And um, I, I, I just, I just don't know. Uh, can I say a few things? Because I, I really feel this and it's just. The floor is yours. Thank you. I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but during COVID when a lot of stuff started selling out and everything, one of the biggest things that a lot of people bought up recently was ammunition. I see this playing out to where Black Friday is always bad and people always die on Black Friday. I remember talking to a friend in England and he was like, people actually get killed on Black Friday? Yeah. I, I'm just seeing it now where we're probably going to see a couple people get shot. And I'm being flat out honest. People are going to get shot this year because someone bought the last thing that someone had or someone didn't want to go look in the back because honestly, there was nothing in the back and they weren't happy. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'd made mention that I feel like this should be the year that retailers hire security. They're not going to, but they should. And I mean, God, I mean, you know, Amy, there's going to be shortages in GameStop. I mean, because of the chip shortages. I mean, look at these people that are going to try desperately to find PS fives and Xbox one X's and all this other shit for the kids. And it's just not going to be there. Oh yeah. And that's absolutely true. I mean, I've been out of GameStop since summer of 2019, but I still, Love my coworkers. I still try to keep in touch with them, and apparently their spouses too. And they said last year was pretty bad, and now a lot of them have already left GameStop because of the fear of the future. Like it's not even the fear of the company; it's just the fear of protecting yourself. And like, I'm so glad I got out. My husband said uh, one night, "This is actually going to be a year where he just doesn't really fear for my life on Black Friday or worse Thanksgiving because everything starts earlier now." Yeah, you know, I'd posted, by the way, 2009, you can all thank Kmart because Kmart was the first bunch of yahoos to open up on Thanksgiving. Um, and Lady Brain 101 in the chat says someone at our Walmart got stabbed over a set of sheets. It, that's where we're over a set of sheets. Yep, that's where we're at, at Walmart. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. You do take that, a, take those fights to Bath and Body where the sheets are actually worthwhile, but still bad. So, um, Gilgamesh, have you had I'm any? A, I know you're in corporate and whatnot, but didn't you say you worked retail, like front facing retail for a while too? Yep, yeah, I've worked in GameStop, I've worked at Walmart. Um, yeah. Oh, we got so, another GameStop person. Great. Huzzah. <laughs> Um, um, I'll probably say the only job I've had a good experience with customers at was at Disney World, but that was short lived. But that's another conversation. But um, at GameStop, yeah, I, I can definitely relate with. Um, I'm sorry, what was your name? Uh, you can just call me Amy. It's cool. Okay, I can definitely relate with what was, uh, Amy was saying because even though it was years ago, it was more or less the same thing. Um, game releases, especially around. This time of the year, game releases become really big. But now, since they're stretching over into February now, it, it I can imagine how bad it's going to be with, with with just keeping things in stock for gaming. Um, me personally, I've given up my uh, search for a Xbox Series X because I highly doubt that I'll ever be able to get one anytime soon. And if I do, I don't want to have to pay damn near a thousand dollars for it. I just want to say, fuck scalpers. Yeah. Absolutely. Continue. <laughs> but um, as, as far as like the the personal climate during the holiday season this year, especially, I'm I'm really afraid because my store is in an area that is a in a county that is known for crime, and like people shoot people there over the most smallest of all things. Like you said something about my mama, you didn't pay um, my bill. I'm going to go into my car, grab my shotgun, and walk back into the store and. Hoping pretty God I can change things with I mean, with you know with a fully loaded gun. People do that type of stuff here. Um, it hasn't happened in a while, but our store gets hit with threats a lot. There are people who have threatened to be like, if I have to come back here again, I'm going to hurt somebody, and we've had to flat out ban them from the store. Like it, it's it's very scary. Oftentimes, if um like 
all of us get up when customers come in and we make sure we're near a desk that has a silent alarm on it, just in case either one of us have to pull that trigger in case anyone jumps out of line too much. Are you in a location where you have bars on the windows? Unfortunately not. Are you saying that you should? Yeah, we should, but we don't. Damn. And and obviously the company you work for is aware of this and aware of where you're located. And yeah. <laughs> they're they're complicit. If anything bad does happen, they're complicit because they haven't done anything to help you guys out. I guess they give you panic buttons, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, there's been moments where we've been told to raise only to see taxes eat it up. Wow. I've, I've, got, I've gotten raises and I never get a chance to see it because all my taxes, are they kill it. Or they'll constantly change the compensation every quarter. Um, they did something where they even they even the floor for everybody. So even people who are tenured employees ended up with the same exact amount as someone who just entered the company. Which, by the way, is thirteen dollars and fifty cents an hour. Damn. Yeah, you missing, but it's not enough. And a lot of people ended up quitting because of that. Yeah, like they, you, they keep changing the rules. They keep moving the goalposts every single time. We think we're doing something good and we pay for it. So, have you seen? You know, obviously with the labor issue, are, are you obviously you're seeing more of people coming in and making the same money that tenured employees have made? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and see that that's something that you know we've kind of talked about in the past that doesn't get brought up enough is there's no compensation for your current employees. No, not at all. Uh, but the, what's wrong is the people who came in, they're making the same as uh, the tenured employees are making the same as them. Their their pay rates got cut. Whoa, wait a minute. So what? tenured employees' pay so rates got cut to, to make sure everybody balanced out? Right. Because That's some bullshit. <laughs> The company went through a massive change, and because of that, they were put into a billion, well, a, a debt that's in like billions of dollars. So the company is basically resorting to tactics to make money or cut costs any way it can. Did they try to do something creative and say, hey, we're changing your base pay, but you have more bonus potential? Yep. That's exactly uh, what they did. Uh huh. Uh huh. So they have no intention of you getting that uh-huh. damn money. No. That's even extended all the way out. So I'm in the warehousing side of retail. So happy there. But they have done that to my current associates. And I can't name the name because I I actually like my job. But they've done that, too. I've had employees that have been $9.50 for five years. But you're going to hire a bunch of new people. Granted, we're in central Texas. You're going to hire them in for $10. It's just a spit in the face of the people who have been here since the opening of this warehouse. I feel crappy giving that news and I shouldn't have to give that news. I think we, they should have been having a raise. They have the knowledge. They have the tenure. That so is, now I, so feel, I, I went from having uh, a staff to a hundred when I got there in June. Now I have 68. I felt bad. <laughs> I felt bad enough getting the offer at this job. Um, the one I got fired from when I found out that the people who were lasting all the way through COVID we're only making ten fifty eight an hour, but they hired me on at fifteen an hour. Wow! And there was a guy who's been with the company eight years, and that was his hourly rate if he if his commission did not exceed his hourly intake. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why they institute the policy: don't talk about your pay. Yep. Yeah. I was told if I talked about my pay and it was discovered, I would be fired on the spot. Same. Jesus, Lord Almighty. Um, going back to the violence thing, Iron Maiden says, my hubby works for Amazon and one of his coworkers was threatened with a shotgun for delivering a package that he ordered because he was on his property. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. <laughs> I mean, th- this is where we're heading. So, Proto, I, I think you're right. And, and I don't... God, I don't think any of us, you know, want to see it happen, but it's just, it just, it I just don't. feels like there's this powder keg that, that it, it just seems to be pointing to Black Friday. It's just like, 
everybody's anger is going to come out at once. And then uh, Hero in the chat says, I raised a question, not encouraging it, but do you think corporations would care if people refused to open the doors on Black Friday, mobs and or opened them and walked away as it all gets looted? No, they have insurance. <laughs> yeah. They have so much insurance in those stores that back in June of 2020, and I talked about this with my Renaissance Center buddies that, so we had the alarms at every door and every desk and we had the bars and I've had customers that we had to put in the notes, threaten gun violence. They still wanted to sell to them. So that was my final straw and catalytic converters being stolen out of our vehicles. It's, it's not going to change. The company has insurance. They expect this to happen and they do have a policy on that. It is, if you don't see it in your PNL as a manager or as a district manager, they're hiding something because they do have insurance for that. Well, they have insurance. They don't they, care. They got insurance. And they have a built-in shrink reserve. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. But, but you know, it, I'm starting to see a lot of, you know, talk on anti-work on Reddit about um, trying to organize a Black Friday walkout. Now, I know they've got insurance, but I am telling you what. You have, can you imagine just one, all right, just one Walmart out there that the entire staff walks out as soon as Black Friday starts? I think it'd be glorious. And, you know, it'd be- Send even, me their GoFundMes. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, you got to hit them where it hurts and, you know, you hit them in the pocketbook because, yes, unfortunately, people do some, you know- illegal things if they feel they can get away with it and god can you imagine you know that it, it, it just that walmart would get emptied out like in less than an hour it'd be over you know or if if there was a mass walkout like that to where maybe and unfortunately only the managers are there you think the managers are going to be able to keep a mob of people out of the stock room no <laughs> they want to go see what's in this mysterious back themselves I did a year and a half at Walmart and you'd be surprised at the amount of people that just walk back there, but cause we can't touch them or do anything. And this was like back in 2010, 2011, just, they just let them go with TVs. They just let them go with the Xbox connects, man. I'm old. I'm old. And I remember that. Wow. Xbox next. We're going way back, way back, <laughs> way damn back. Um, uh, uh, Iron Maiden says, unfortunately the workers and products, are all disposable to companies. Well, also see it this way. It would cost them, like if everybody walked out, they unified, it would cost them so much more to fire everyone and retrade an entire store. Yeah. Than it would to try and retain them. I just, like I said, I think there's, there's a lot of worker anger. I mean, now look, well, let's be honest here, okay? Yes, we know customers are going to be angry about supply chain issues, but hey, let's face it. You're going to have workers out there whose mental health aren't isn't in real good shape that they may be the ones to snap, you know? And that's what yeah. makes this all so dangerous is that it's both sides now. You've got thousands of thousands of employees who have woken up to the fact that they're worth more and they're tired of putting up with shit. You don't know how many of those workers out there here are, are secretly waiting for Black Friday just to, to snap and walk out, you know, unbeknownst to people. So, you know, it, it's, you know, I took, I, I signed off for Black Friday. You know, there was originally going to be something that we were going to do, but that is no more. But uh, I plan on staying engaged with the news that day. And, um, you know, there'll be some sort of, stream or something during the day but it's going to be man you know for you guys that have gotten out be glad you're out that is going that is not going to be anywhere to be um the fuck today says i have an emergency plan in place if shit pops off y'all go down to the picnic table and we call loss prevention i'm not stopping shit there you go there you go yeah um oh mariah karen says they're off Black Friday. Let's live stream it. Man, we could do that. You know, we got to do something for Black Friday. But um, so let, let's, Amy, how was your treatment at GameStop? 
So I'm going to consider myself very, very much the lucky one. I was hired into a Tucson district and that for some reason, because my store is so far out in the middle of nowhere, if you know where Safford or Thatcher, Arizona is, I'll be shocked. So shout out to the 7714. Uh, So I was very lucky. I had a district manager that was very supportive and would drive the three to four hours from Phoenix to actually help me get my store set up because it was my literally i shit you not part of my french they it was my first management gig ever so i i can't speak for other game stops i can't speak for other associates because i've heard the horror stories because we do have a really good uh reddit street reddit thread on that but it was pretty good i was really really angry that they hired me on saying hey we're not going to work thanksgiving and then two weeks i was like okay we're also going to be open on thanksgiving because they said the associates wanted that i'm sorry who the hell wants to be open on thanksgiving i want to know which associate said that because i guarantee you it was not an associate uh so i was very very lucky and it actually did help me a little bit with my mental health recovery because bef- prior to that i was at a customer service gig for Tractor Supply. Great company. Job sucked. Uh, the support really sucked. So GameStop, in a way, did kind of help me get back on my feet. So GameStop was cool. But the Black Friday and the Thanksgiving, the customers, no thanks. No, not doing it. And you were already coming off the Call of Duty launches, uh, Battlefield launch. October, November, December is nothing but video game launches and you have black friday on top of that it is just nuts so i consider myself very lucky but i know so many people that were not as lucky as i was so um question for you guys so what kind of important events have you missed in your life due to the job that you work and uh we will start with gilgamesh um i've missed birthdays um Family events have been cut short. Uh, to be honest, I've been fighting my hardest. Actually, no. I, yeah, I actually have to fight my hardest to get to as many as family events as I possibly can because I always get hit with the, well, scheduling is based on the company's needs. And I'm like, well, if you don't have me, you don't have, like, basically I'm saying, you know, without me, you, you're screwed. So just give me this one day or deal with me not coming in and I have no problem with being no call, no show. I have to be like that with them in order to get what I want. And I hate it. Um, oh, wow. But like, there are many moments where I missed a lot of stuff because I had to work. And I hated having to tell family members, sorry, I have to work. Now it's, you know, let me know so I can get that time off because I, I this is something family, you know, 2020, I barely got to see my family. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not taking any chances now. I'm taking all my chances, basically. Got you. Proto, what about you? Things I've missed because of work. Um, I missed out on a lot of time with my mom when she was sick because I was working third shift at that crappy hotel and that other call center job. I... I didn't get a lot of time to spend with her while she was going downhill. But more recently over COVID and everything, I had to miss my cousin's funeral. My younger cousin who um, had apparently OD'd and I wasn't able to be there. That is um, unfortunate. That sucks. Uh, You know... um your other half uh, said that you missed uh, grandmother's passing. Yep. Her grandmother, who was very close to her, almost like a second mother, I wasn't able to be down to go with her. I had to stay behind and keep working just so we wouldn't fall behind on any bills. But um, did manage to send her down to be at the funeral that is um that's awful um katie in the chat says proto sorry uh mariah karen as well and uh iron maid uh hero 
had to, you know, hero had to miss her grandmother's funeral due to work. Um, Amy, anything like that for you? Uh, well, first things proto, I am so sorry. Uh, that's awful. So, uh, now as far for me, I have missed some sort of variation of everything since 2014. I haven't been back for a Christmas since 2015 and Thanksgiving. Forget about it. Um, so I'm hoping with this new job, because next year I hope to have a little bit of PTO, even though it's a warehouse, I can actually go back for Christmas of 2022. My grandparents are much older. I've lost one grandparent and I had to do a turn and burn from Arizona to my hometown in Ohio. So I'm originally from Ohio. So if you get some mixed accents there, that's why. Are you a Buckeye? Oh, hell no. I'm a Bobcat. No, no, Okay. No. Thank you. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, the rest of my family is all Buckeyes. Thanks. So Thanksgiving is interesting there, uh, but I haven't been back home to even see my in-laws either for a holiday or for birthdays pretty much since 2014. Well, uh, I'm going to pose this question to to you guys as well. One thing that it did to me, all right, and, you know, my wife can attest to this uh, through 20-something odd years of this. Uh, the business has made me extremely emotionally detached to the point that, yeah, I missed some things, but you become so brainwashed and so callous <laughs> to what is going on that it just becomes, oh, okay. And... You know, one of the reasons, you know, that I started doing all this anyway was to try to shake all that off because the the business, I mean, flat out drained just so much natural emotion out of me that, you know, that's what my, my wife has said. She's like, you've become emotionally detached. So have any of you experienced anything like that? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> What? Like, um, have I become emotionally attached to attached at times? Yes, especially when you get really, really creepy, scary, like super pissed, quiet. Yep. <laughs> what? What about you, Gilgamesh? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> um. Uh, so, I'll uh, oh, go ahead. Um, Irish was not able to make it tonight because he is a little under the weather and he's getting worked to death over there in Ireland. But there was a question that he posted that he wanted to ask everybody. Um, when you would reach issues or, or situations where your mental health was suffering because of your job or career, what kind of effect did that have on your spouses or partners? I mean, I can go first. It, you, for, you first. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. So, uh, I mean, my husband's sitting in the other room, and he's an educator. Uh, we've been married since 2016, together since 2010, but for our entire lives up until this past summer, I've been in retail. And, I, and I'm still trying to get over it now, but I have been very, very quick to anger because you, you get a lot of push back from customers and if you don't have the good management backing you up it does build and it builds and it builds and it has to go somewhere so i have been very quick to anger and getting out he has said you're so much happier you are actually really nice to be around and i'm like is that does that mean i'm a bitch and he's like kind of you were you were you were for a long time um and then, like, shortly after we got married, I had to do a five-day stay in a 72-hour hold because it got that low, and he did not know quite what to do because I was locked in a job mm -hmm. that I absolutely hated, but I had no skill set to go anywhere else at that moment. So there was a lot of worry and anxiety and bracing yourself for whatever comes through that door at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, sometimes 11.30, just so you can see your spouse that you only see for maybe, like, an hour a day. So I at least know for him, it was a whole lot of you have to prepare yourself or whatever walks through that door because you don't know what's going to come through that door. Because I know for me, I am very quick to anger. And that's Same. something I definitely had to work on. Same. Actually, I get I get yelled at a lot for, for being wiser. Your first reaction, always anger. 
Mm, I think I know why. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, Gilgamesh, you got anything? Um, I had to realize that I would do a lot of stuff like on the way home. I would just incessantly complain about my job to my husband or when I got home, I'd start complaining about it to him. And he, I mean, he, he's an excellent guy. He would just sit there and be like, mm-hmm, okay, yeah, that's fucked up. That sucks. Did, did you say this? Did you do, did you really do that? Oh, okay, good. Don't let them do that to you. But I think my issue is now, um, I feel like I'm trapped in my job. I hate my job. It, it made me just absolutely hate it. And I know I can go other places. I mean, like I, well, I can increase my skill set because I have a huge knowledge of um, computers and I, I, I really want to go into IT. It's just my job dominates a large part of my life. It's what I call home. I, I nervously laugh about it because I tell my customers it all the time and they laugh along with me thinking it's funny. I'm like, no, that's I feel like every day is just a loop that I'm stuck in, and I have I have to um do the same thing, the same song and dance. So, um, does, does does your husband support you know the fact that you're looking to do something and look to get out? Yeah, he's been like he he highly encourages me often. He's like you know find a school to go to, and figure out what you need to do, and I've been looking and there's one school that I really would like to go to, but it requires money and money spite like that. Gotcha. But hey, you know, that, that says a lot though. I mean, just having the support, you know, speaks volumes, you know? Um, so Proto, what you got? Um, I know we definitely had strained moments because of work stress, either from your end or my end. Yeah, definitely. We, we've both had very stressful jobs. We've been together how many years now? Uh, good question. I don't know. Yeah, we, we've we been engaged for, what, three or four years, and we've been dating longer than that. <laughs> um, but I know I've seen plenty of times where stress has been so much where she would just break down. The world was, the world was done. That was it. She yep. had to break down, cry. I think a couple times you wanted to, to drive all the way back home. Yep, a few times. And we managed to not have that happen. Um, mine has been, I had been dead, emotionally shot. I admit my mind had not been in the best places at times. But... Even at the times where I've not been the most mentally stable, um, she knows one of my biggest hobbies, and she'll find one of my model kits that I haven't finished yet. She'll tell me on an off day, here, take this, go to the table, work on this, and it's kind of therapeutic. Nice. Now, I will say, I, I I will say that, you know, this emotional detachment thing, um, well, and you know that I had to take time off this past year because of mental health. Yeah, she had to do three months. Ooh. Where did you work? Well, yeah, three months because it's just draining. I can't say what I do. I can't say. Um, the best vague way I could put it is. At home, well, this current is remote tech support. Yes, you can say that. That, that is the vaguest okay. I can Fair do. enough. Well, I mean, and there you go. You can say that. That works. Yeah. For, prior to that was you were literally HR, everyone's babysitter. Oh, we aren't getting into where my boss was an 18-year-old kid. Yeah, and there was a lot of uh, shady things that had to be put under your name. Yeah, like a company PayPal account. Oh, wow. And maybe a company other payment system. A company credit card got put under my name. Um, Oh, let's not forget that I had to rent a quote unquote office space out of our home. Wow. (laughs) What? 
That- so I, I was working towards HR certification and every red flag just showed up to me like, no, oh my God, this is breaking yeah. so many laws in every state. Oh my God. It, it, this was a job where she was, well, she worked all the way up from basic customer support all the way up to HR. It's a, quote unquote HR. It's not yeah. even real HR. Like they had me there as a, just a figurehead. This is you're supposed to be our mouth, talk, talk, talk type thing. That was what it was. Yeah. There was no real system. They had nothing because my boss was an 18 year old kid. My second boss was not much older than him, yet they both claimed to be genius prodigies. Oh, and by the way, the product that they had got bought out by Microsoft. Oh, what? and it failed tremendously. It, it's no longer functioning service now. Wow. Uh, Proto, we're going to have to give her her own episode here soon. <laughs> I keep telling her that. Boy, that sounds like that'd be a good one. <laughs> um, um, oh, okay. The, the Irish connection. Irish <laughs> connection has popped in. Um, he has a question, real quick. How does management respect your mental health over there? Talking about the good old United States. So, what? We'll start with you, Gilgamesh, and then we'll go Gilgamesh, then Amy, then Proto. Uh, how do you feel your employer? Um, treats your mental health? Do they respect it or is it something they just don't want to hear about? So go ahead, Gilgamesh. This is like a, a, there's multiple ways to answer this question. In one sentence, no. Um, In detail, on one hand, they claim to say that they're all for mental health. They, you know, they honor the Autism uh, Awareness Month. I am on the autism, uh, Autism Spectrum. Um, but in store, my manager decides to play, um, a condition, what I like to call condition Olympics with me. So he'll be like, I'll I'll tell him, I really like a consistent schedule because I work with patterns very well. I'm on the spectrum. So irregularities really screw me up. Can you please just make it more consistent? I don't care if you have me do consistent opening. You can do consistent closing. Just don't do something where you have me close one night and then have to open the next day that you're going to get the worst at me. He goes, okay, yeah. I look at the schedule. I'm closing, opening, closing, opening, closing, opening, closing, opening. So it, it's like basically I say one thing. He acts like he's listening, and then he tosses whatever I, I told him out the window and does whatever the hell he wants to do. Me and him butt heads over it constantly because I have to remind him that I'm on the spectrum. And but you know uh, one thing that you just said that that is a key to to your offer of consistency was you were fine just give me consistent closes as well and you know that's something that a lot of managers out there they don't have anybody willing to close consistently and the fact that he even ignored that that's that's terrible. Uh-huh. And he acts like being on dialysis is something that's com- competitive. And I'm like, well, I'm not trying to compete, you know, with who's dealing with what condition worse. You shouldn't be working, in my opinion, anyway. But that's besides the point. Got gotcha. you. Okay, Amy, your turn. Oh, so, uh, well, I mean, we'll start with the track supply store side. Depends on your manager. I had a manager that was actually pretty chill. It's just like, hey, if you need to take off, take off. I was just too broke to take off. So I ran myself to the ground there. The home office, they talk good talk about mental health. But when you're a service representative, so you're the first floor, nobody's really going to talk to you. Although the CEO at the time from 2014, 2015, it was actually kind of cool and did check in, like actually came down and check in. They talk a good talk about mental health, but say, here's the employee assistance fund. Go deal with it there or go call your provider. And their insurance was not with it. So the outreach there or even just to talk to a manager in your department, you you might as well have written an email that went to their junker spam. Uh, around 2014, 2015, 2016 is when my mental health, so I was already playing her. It actually took a nosedive from there, um, which again, five days day and it's 72 hour hold. It was fantastic. Uh, GameStop, 
I again, I was lucky, so I'm not going to say they were the greatest company role because I know they have done so many people dirty. But if I needed like a weekend off, I just had to plan it out in a way where I still got my 44 hours and it was honored. But as far as like a mental health plan, like, hey, here's someone you can outreach. Oh, here's an outreach program. Here's somebody with the company that you can come to and they can give you some resources. Forget about it. It, There's a link. It leads you to nowhere. It leads you to nowhere in, for all my GameStop people, it's GSO. It doesn't exist. It just leads you to another link, to another link, to like an Air 404. Uh, Rena Center, no such thing exists. Absolutely no such thing exists. It's going to be just between you and your district manager. My first district manager, he said, do what you got to do. Just make sure your work gets done. The second district manager, it was immediate gaslighting immediate gaslighting. Uh, my favorite was talking about Black Fr- going back to Black Friday. Last Black Friday, my store manager, because I had to take a demotion, he had a heart attack, so he couldn't work. Collections manager ran off to Maryland. Driver quit. Driver didn't show up. So it was just me. Literally just me. He knew this. So I'm operating a store pretty much by myself for a whole week and a half plus a holiday. And you're going to, he still berated me for not getting 40 sales on Black Friday. Wow. I, I think that Sunday after Thanksgiving, because we're closed on Sundays, I just got blackout drunk and I shut down. I want to bring no, up. No resources. I want to bring up what you said, because this is my argument about, you know, how companies handle mental health is they don't. And they, they, they have a quote unquote EAP employee assistance policy that is your, usually just a pamphlet of, you know, a one sheet piece of paper that they hand you and say, here, go, go talk to these people when and you get you know, three sessions, you get three sessions. That's mm-hmm. all you get. Yep. And you still got to pay for it. Exactly. And you know, when sometimes all the mental health help you may need at that moment, is just for your boss to sit down and talk to you like a human for a minute. You know, they, they, they just can't, and, and they won't. So, um, Proto, your turn. Um, back at the vape shop, I will say it wasn't that bad for that. I had some really great managers that they understood, hey, look, mentally I am not okay. I have some BTO days I'm putting in, and I... They would be like, all right, cool, or if something's up and I needed them to cover instead, they were cool to do that because I did the same for them if they were having problems. At the mattress place? I think that speaks for itself. The district manager, (laughs) yeah, the district manager was the person you go to. She was the one who was the actual manager of all the stores, essentially. And I... Try to explain to her, look, this is how my brain is. I am ADHD. My brain's not going to function like a lot of other people's, so please work with me. And instead, it felt not caring. It felt degrading. It felt like I wasn't a person, but instead I was to go out there and help her make her bonus. And if I couldn't do that, then I didn't matter. Yep. You know which puts a lot of weight on you. You know, there was an article that I came across. I think it was from Wired, um, and I'd posted it a a week or so ago. And they were talking about the great resignation that we've all heard about. And this was the very first article based on that term that said the great resignation is more about being a mental health movement. And I believe that. I believe that, you know, media wants to spin it, you know, that it's all about wages or or whatnot. No, it is not. It, you know, goes back to people understanding, yes, that they're worth more, true, but they realize they've put themselves in like insufferable positions and for the longest time they've just taken it but now they're waking up to the fact that they do not have to and you know just the sheer reporting 
that somebody actually connected the mental health aspect to the great resignation was amazing to me. Um, and, you know, I think that's something that, that needs to be looked at further because, you know, there's a whole lot of different reasons why, you know, these jobs aren't getting filled again and whatnot, but it really comes down to, I mean, you know, the treatment and the abusive nature of the business that people are like, it's, it's enough, you know, no one's helping us out. So now we're going to have to help ourselves. And if we have to remove ourselves from the situation, that's what we're going to do in mass. And that's what we're seeing. Um, you know, it, it's, it, the wages are important. Um, you know, obviously everybody would like to make more money, but I'll tell you guys a little bit of a story. All right. So, you know, we talk about how this affects us and whatnot. You know, I've talked about how, you know, <clears throat> emotionally detached and like similar, you know, like Amy, anger is always the first reaction and whatnot. But it came to a point where I just, I finally hit the wall, so to speak. And actually getting laid off during COVID actually helped with this. And I think this is the first time in a decade plus that my wife could tell you that I've actually said that I'm actually happy and I'm content. I took a huge fucking pay cut. All right. I, I, I don't make near as much money as I used to. Um, but you know, we adjusted our life to be simple and peaceful. And you know, if you guys are stuck out there, look, you, you can get out. And you, yeah, you might not be rich, all right, but you can do okay for yourself. And I would encourage everybody go find something that doesn't give you as much stress. I, I, you know, I know management's a big deal for people. They want to be managers, and that's where the money's at. I'm telling you, that set of keys ain't worth shit at all. So you know, there's hope. It just takes a while to find it, and then one day you're going to find out. You know what? Things are different now, but my God, my headspace is a lot better. And it's been a, an amazing turnaround for me personally. I mean, I'm still, yeah, emotionally detached because, you know, that's like battle scars. You know, it gets a little bit better. Um, not great. And, you know, I still have the anger fuse. But I don't, it, it is so nice to not have to wake up and worry about, you know, what I've got to do. I mean, I went and simplified my career as much as I could. I, you know, I spend most of my days, eight hours a day, separating a truck box by box and stocking. That's it. And sure, it sucks missing those paychecks, but this is when you realize the money's not worth it. So um, we're sitting at an hour 16. Um, I'm going to go through and let you guys, you know, close out with whatever final comment you would like to say. So we will start with uh, Gilgamesh again. All right. <clears throat> um, okay. Well, I guess my closing thing will be this. Um, I read somewhere it was a meme where someone talked about like henchmen in movies, you know, Every time you watch a movie and you see, let's say, for instance, um, Avengers Endgame, when Tony Stark snapped his fingers and you watched Thanos and his entire army disappear, you felt nothing for them, right? Right. Most of all, they were evil. They were nobody's to you. Well, or, or another one, when you're watching Star Wars and stormtroopers get shot constantly, they're being blown up left and right. You feel nothing for them. We are the stormtroopers. That's why, com that's why customers can talk to us in ways where they wouldn't talk to anyone else because we're not human to them. We're, we're inanimate objects that are supposed to be there to serve them. Holy shit, bro. You win the night. Wow. Very, very well said. And, you know, that, wow. I agree. You're spot on. Thank you for that. Uh, Amy, your last words. Oh, how do I sum this up? Uh, so I know in hip, pretending you're happy, so that customer service voice that we all got, um, feigning happiness prevents you from being happy. I am so much better now that I've gotten out of retail. The battle scars are still there. Like, 
like you've talked about, kind of still despondent. Uh, just do it. Make that industry change. I'm in warehousing now. Love my life. My quality of life is better. The money's still the same. So your mental health ain't worth that set of keys. Don't do it. If you can, get out. If you can't, make a plan. Make a plan so you don't spend money doing a five-day stay in a 72-hour hold like I did. Nice. Proto. The biggest thing I want to focus on is when we had the big pandemic where a lot of people were able to finally get some, I guess you could say, unasked for vacation. There was a small improvement of mental health. And now here we are where it's all ripping up again. It's not just that it's ripping up. It's that it's attempting to be forcibly taken away from us in a way that people aren't completely kosher with. And that's a large reason why we have the great resignation, as it were. Yeah. And the biggest thing I worry about is for all your friends and family, loved ones that are out in the field, check on them. You know, see if they're okay. Because I was looking up stats earlier since... 2018, well, up until 2018, uh, suicide rates within customer service and retail had written by, has risen by 11%. We already know with everything that's going on, it's probably going to go higher than that if things continue the way they are, crushing at souls. Yep, and everybody needs to know, you know, if you need help, talk to somebody. You know, and, uh, you know, I, I like, you know, I like having these discussions because I know, you know, sometimes it brings back painful memories for others and whatnot. But, you know, this is all meant to be therapy, not the retail therapy, you know, where the Karens are going, getting their their lattes and shopping all day long. This is where we get to commune and talk about this shit, you know, and uh, Iron Maiden says, I honestly don't know how you can be happy in retail when you are a punching bag for the public. You can only fake the smiles and I'm sorry for not doing anything wrong for so long until you just can't do it anymore. Bingo. Um, and, you know, once again, I want to thank you guys for being on. Uh, Gilgamesh, like I said, that, that Stormtrooper thing, boy, we going to be on that one for a minute. You did a great job with that one. That is a perfect analogy. Thank you. Um, Amy, thank you for, for popping in. I'm glad you got the, the technical difficulty worked out. And uh, Proto, as always, it is a joy. Um, and you need to talk to your other half about maybe we'll have us uh, an episode with just her. Because I think that would be full of fire. And uh, speaking of fire, next week, it's kind of like Union Week, actually. Because Monday, we're going to have Target Workers Unite, a representative from them. And then Wednesday, we're going to have Alki Historker, who is does great video um, sessions about unions. So if you have questions about unions, all right, you know, especially if you live in the Southeast, because, you know, there's not a lot of, there's more union busting that goes on here than anywhere. But if you have questions or you want to know how it works or whatnot, I highly suggest you tune in Wednesday. Um, you know, I've put a link up. Uh, before on Twitter with his YouTube page, the videos that he does are, are fantastic. And one of the things we're going to talk about is he's going to go over like the different myths involved with uh, unions. So it's going to be extremely informative. I know early on when I started asking people about what they'd like us to talk about, there were a few people that mentioned they wanted to know more about unions. Well, Wednesday night, you're going to get your, uh, your education. So once again, everybody, thank you all for being here. Um, we will do this again Monday. And everybody have a safe, safe night. Check on your people that work in the field. Um, pray for everybody for Black Friday. And we will see you guys next time.